Well, let's start with those. Let's start with uh, Space Force, the new Steve Carell show. It premieres this Friday. The premise of this show, Space Force is a workplace comedy series that centers on a group of people tasked with establishing the sixth branch of the United States Armed Forces. The United States Space Force. Carell's character, Mark Naird, is the general in charge of the effort, and the series follows his collaboration to get boots on the moon per the orders of the president. Well, like I said, this show comes out on Friday, and reviews have started to come in from critics who got to watch it early. And Alon, any guess on the reception? Uh, lukewarm. I would say leaning more negative, actually. Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 46%, and on Metacritic, it has a 47 Just to give you a baseline for comparison, Greg Daniels' most recent show that premiered on Amazon upload that show on rotten tomatoes has an 86 percent versus this show's 46 percent upload has an 86 yeah the thing is with, with rotten <laughs> tomatoes their whole tv rating system there is something wrong with it everything skews either super positive or super negative the number of shows on there that have a hundred percent things like world of tomorrow or whatever that show is called that arrow uh spinoff i forget I what it's called but these shows have very high ratings and i don't think they all deserve it but Getting into the details of it, I went through a bunch of the reviews out there, and just to get a general theme of what they're saying about the show, here are some of the review titles. And I enjoy these because a lot of these reviews are trying to find a good way to spin the title using a fun pun or something along those lines. So Alan Sepinwall from Rolling Stone, his review is titled, Netflix Comedy Suffers Failure to Launch. Yeah. Then over on Variety, they say the new Netflix comedy reaches for the moon, but falls way short of greatness. And then over on Slash Film, Netflix comedy series shoots for the moon, but can't stay on trajectory. So a couple of those <laughs> were going for a similar vibe. Anyway, digging into the details of what the critics are saying, Seppenwall over at the Rolling Stone, he basically said that the character in this show is pretty reminiscent of Michael Scott in season one of The Office. If you remember when the American remake of The Office first started, the first season was not received very well. And part of that is because Michael Scott was such a non-sympathetic character. He was a jerk and more frustrating than funny to watch. And they're saying the same thing about his character in Space Force. Apparently in the second half of the season, they pull back on that a little bit, make him more sympathetic. So there is hope that perhaps a season two could be better. But overall, at least according to Seppenwall, the show had a kind of tonal whiplash where sometimes it wants to be an outright spoof and other times it wants to be pretty genuine and that just didn't work. Though Seppenwall and pretty much any of the critics I looked at praised the performances, including John Malkovich especially being a pretty funny character. And Rich in the chat says, upload is original and good. Space Force sounds like The Office on a new set. At least... According to the premise, I would agree with you. Upload is definitely a more original premise, and it has a little bit of a new concept. And Space Force, yeah, the pitch to the network, I imagine, was basically, hey, remember how much everyone loved The Office? Let's do that in space. Caroline over at Variety says that the show swings wildly between the idea of Space Force being ridiculous to sometimes trying to be inspiring. She said the show has an identity crisis. So very similar themes to what Seppenwall was saying over at Variety. Charlie Chalk in the chat says, I'm unsure what to expect from Space Force. I'll give it a go, but I'm not getting my hopes up. That is probably the right attitude to go into this show with, at least based on all the reviews we're reading here. Now, to look for what people are saying on the more positive side, I looked at the Collider interview, and the interesting thing is that the positive interviews seem to have a lot of the same issues with the show that the more negative reviews had. So my big takeaway is that it's a pretty uneven first season, which is not unusual for shows. They're still sort of feeling things out, figuring things out. So probably go into the show with an open mind and see if the positive qualities are good enough for you to look past the negative qualities. And meanwhile, Alon, what about you? Are you going to check out season one, or are you going to sit on the sidelines and see if they find their footing for season two? Uh, I wasn't planning on it. Let me see if I can convince you. Let's look at the Collider article. Okay. Here's a quote. There are characters that work better than others, and it takes a few episodes for the series to find the right tone. Satire ain't easy. 
But by the end of the 10 episode first season run, I found myself endeared to this disparate ensemble and deeply invested in what happens next. So, you know, a Greg Daniels show. Basically saying that Greg Daniels seems to follow this pattern of a first season where they're really figuring things out. They have to tweak the characters and they seem to lock into place like they did with Parks and Rec, like they did with The Office, and like hopefully they will with Upload. Maybe <laughs> season two will be great. He goes on to talk about the obvious political references. So, of course, Space Force announced by Donald Trump. No coincidence that this show is about all of that. And according to the Collider article, the political references are pretty heavy early on. They're pretty over the top and obvious. But as it goes along, the show tends to focus more on the characters, less on the satire. And it sounds like that does a that is a good thing for the show. That the political references are pretty over the top and more distracting than funny. The Collider article said that, and a few of the other critics I read said the same thing. That was one thing I was curious about going into this, and uh, I'm pleased to hear that the political references sort of died down in the second half of the season. Because at least for me, I'm not a big fan of political satire generally. I feel like politics are ridiculous enough as it is. I don't need a satirized <laughs> version of them. Uh, to, to, I don't need to see more of them outside of just the news. Anyway, so Alon, you already said you're probably not planning to check out season one. I'm probably in the same boat. You know, for me to check out a straight up comedy, I'm usually not a big fan. It takes a lot to win me over. So unless Rich or Charlie Chalk in the chat check it out and report back that it's a great show, I'll probably skip it for now until we hear better things or if it improves in season two.